read and discover. Level five, materials to products by Alex Raynham, read by Laurel Lefko, published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2011. Introduction. Products are things that people make or use, like this book, your clothes, and the television in your home. People make products from different materials, like wood, metal, and plastic. What products can you see here? What products can you see around you? What materials are they made of? Discover! Now read and discover more about the materials that people use to make products. Chapter 1. The First Materials A very long time ago, people didn't build homes. They slept in forests and caves, hunted animals, and collected fruit. They also made things from materials that they found around them. What did they make? And what materials did they use? Flint and Fur People made the first tools from a stone called flint. They used the flints in their hands, or they fixed them to pieces of wood or animal bones. People used flint tools to cut wood and to hunt animals. In cold countries, they used animal fur to make clothes and shoes. Wood and Plants People used wood and plants to make shelters, simple places to sleep in. They cut wood from trees to make the shape of the shelter. Then they used other plants to make the roof and the walls. Some people still make homes like this today. People used grass to make threads. They pushed threads over and under other threads to make clothes and beds. This is called weaving. They also made baskets by weaving thin sticks. Baskets are great for carrying food and catching fish. Discover! People make lots of things from grass and sticks, like this basket boat from Vietnam. Clay About 10,000 years ago, people mixed sand and grass with a type of soil called clay to make a material called adobe. They put the adobe into molds and left it to dry. Adobe becomes very hard in the sun. People used adobe bricks to build the first houses. In many hot countries, people still build adobe houses today. People also learned how to make shapes from clay. They put the clay shapes into a fire to make pottery. Pottery can hold water, so it's great for cooking and keeping food. Bronze and iron. Some rocks have metals in them. About 8,500 years ago, people discovered how to use a process called smelting to get metals out of rocks. The first metals, like gold, were very soft. Then people mixed two metals together to make a hard metal called bronze. They used bronze to make tools and weapons. Later, they used another metal called iron. Stone About 5,000 years ago, people started to live in big towns. They built stone walls around their towns. They also used stone to make buildings like temples and palaces. Stone is waterproof and much stronger than adobe. Discover! The Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt is about 4,500 years old. 
To build it, people used about five million metric tons of stone. Chapter Two: Rocks and Minerals. The ground is made of rocks. In rocks, there are chemicals called minerals that make the rocks different colors. What do people use rocks and minerals for? Stone. Stone comes from rocks. About six hundred years ago, the Inca people built their cities from stone. They used triangles of wood called wedges to break rocks into huge pieces of stone. Hundreds of people used long, round pieces of wood to move the stone. Discover. To build the Inca city of Sacsayhuaman, people moved huge pieces of stone to the top of a hill. Some pieces were more than fifty metric tons. Gems. For thousands of years, people have collected pretty stones called gems. Gems are minerals, and they can be many different colors. Rubies are red. And emeralds are green. Some gems, like diamonds, are transparent; they don't have any color. The prettiest gems are very expensive. People make beautiful jewelry from gems and metals. In the past, artists used some gems to make colors for paints. Crystals. Some gems, like diamonds, are also crystals. Crystals are made of stones that always have a regular shape. Some crystals are transparent. Some are very big, like these huge crystals in Mexico. Metals. Ores are rocks that have minerals in them, like metals. Metal ores. Are a mixture of metals and other chemicals. People get metals from ores by using a process called smelting. During iron smelting, people put iron ore, a chemical called carbon, and a stone called limestone into a very hot place called a blast furnace. At two thousand degrees centigrade, the carbon and limestone. Take the other chemicals from the ore, and iron is made. The iron is a hot liquid, and it becomes hard when it cools. People made iron tools for hundreds of years. Today, people mix liquid iron with other chemicals to make a stronger metal called steel. People make things from lots of different metals, but many things are made of steel. Aluminum and copper. Steel is very strong, so people use it to build cars and very tall buildings called skyscrapers. Aluminum is strong too, and it's lighter than steel. People use it to make things like drinks cans and planes. Copper is a soft metal. Electricity. Can go through copper easily, so people use it to make electrical parts. Discover. People can use copper to make statues. There are more than eighty metric tons of copper in the Statue of Liberty in New York. Chapter Three: Glass and Concrete. Tiny pieces of materials are called grains. People can make a lot of things from grains of rock, soil, or sand. For example, they can make glass and concrete. Glass. The grains of sand on many beaches are made of a mineral called silica. To make glass, people put silica and other chemicals. Into a furnace. 
At 1,500 degrees centigrade, the mixture becomes hot, liquid glass. In the past, people called glass blowers blew air through a long metal tube into the liquid glass to make glass things. Today, most glass is made by machines, but some people still blow glass. They mix colors with glass to make beautiful things. From about 1900, people invented new ways to make things like flat glass windows. Today, there are lots of types of glass. The glass in some sunglasses becomes darker in the sun and lighter in a room. Some glass is very strong. At the Grand Canyon Skywalk in Arizona in the USA, you can walk on glass. Long, thin fibers of glass are called fiberglass. People can mix fiberglass with plastic to make things like boats. Fiberglass is good for insulating things. Hot and cold don't go through fiberglass. People use it in special clothes for very hot or cold places. Concrete Cement is a material that's made by heating grains of rock and clay. When people mix cement with water, sand, and stones, it becomes a liquid called concrete. After a few hours, crystals grow inside the concrete and it becomes a solid material. About 2,000 years ago, the ancient Romans used concrete to make beautiful buildings like the Pantheon. The dome is made of concrete. Later, people forgot how to make concrete for more than 1,000 years. Modern concrete was invented in 1756. Today, it's the world's most important building material. Concrete becomes hard very quickly, so machines only make the concrete when people need it. To make concrete stronger, people put long pieces of steel in it. This is called reinforced concrete. Many of the world's tallest skyscrapers are made of reinforced concrete. Huge machines called pumps move liquid concrete hundreds of meters above the ground. Today, there are many different types of concrete. Waterproof concrete is great for building bridges. Another type of concrete has materials in it that take dangerous chemicals from the air. In the future, this will help to make cities cleaner. Discover! When concrete is mixed with glass, it becomes transparent. Chapter 4 Materials that we grow Farmers grow plants and raise farm animals to collect materials from them. People even grow materials in the ocean. What do we produce from these materials? Cotton. Cotton comes from the flowers of the cotton plant. Farmers grow the plants and collect round pieces of cotton from them. People use machines to wash the cotton and to pull it into long strings called fibers. Then machines spin the fibers into cotton threads. Other machines weave cotton threads into fabric. People use the fabric to make lots of things, like clothes and curtains. People can use special colors called dyes to make the fabric different colors. Wool Wool comes from sheep and other animals. Sheep grow a coat of wool to keep them warm. Once a year, 
farmers cut the wool off the sheep. This is called shearing. Farmers can collect the wool from hundreds of sheep in one day. People pull wool into fibers and spin it. This usually happens in factories, but some people still spin wool at home. Wool is very soft and warm, so it's great for making sweaters and socks. Discover. We can also get wool from animals like llamas, goats, and rabbits. Paper. People made the first paper from small plants, but now they make most paper from trees. At a factory, people mix small pieces of wood with chemicals and water to make a liquid called pulp. Later, machines make the pulp flat. Then they heat it to make it dry. Then long pieces of paper come out of a machine and go onto a roll. We print on paper to make books, and we fix paper together to produce cardboard for making boxes. We should not waste paper because we cut down trees to make it, and it's bad to cut down too many trees. We can reuse old paper to make new things, for example, newspapers, or even materials for building things. Pearls. Oysters are animals that live in the ocean. Oysters produce beautiful pearls when things like grains of sand get into their shell. In the past, people collected and destroyed hundreds of oysters to find one pearl. Now we grow pearls by putting small pieces of shell inside the oyster's shell. Rubber. Natural rubber comes from rubber trees. When farmers cut the tree, it produces liquid rubber. People mix rubber with chemicals to make things like waterproof boots and tires. Many rubber products are made from synthetic rubber that comes from chemicals, but natural rubber is better for our world. Discover. About 3,500 years ago, the Mayan people of Central America played sport with natural rubber balls. Chapter Five: Incredible Oil. Sneakers, plastic toys, plastic shopping bags, and lots of other things are made from chemicals that come from oil. How are they made? And where does oil come from? Oil and natural gas. Oil is made from tiny plants and animals that lived in the seas and oceans millions of years ago. After they died, the sand above them slowly became rock. The rock and heat under the ground changed them into a black liquid called oil, and a gas. Called natural gas. Discover. It takes millions of years to make oil, but we are using it very fast. In a hundred years, there won't be any oil if we don't use it more slowly. We can't use oil from the ground because it's a mixture of different chemicals. At an oil refinery. People heat oil until the different chemicals in the oil become a gas. These chemicals become liquids again at different temperatures, so people can collect different chemicals when the gas cools. Then people can use them. People use some chemicals from oil to burn as fuels, like gasoline for cars. Other chemicals are made into new chemicals called. Petrochemicals. We use petrochemicals to make lots of different products. For example, petrochemical fertilizers help plants to grow. Petrochemical detergents clean things, and cosmetics make your skin look nice.
We use a lot of oil when we make these things. Plastics. Plastics are materials that people make from chemicals. Most plastics are made from petrochemicals, from oil. Some plastic objects are hard, but others are soft. Some plastics are fibers or liquids. People use plastics to make lots of different products. We can put hot liquid plastics into a mold. The plastic cools and becomes an object with the same shape as the mold. This is how we make toys and plastic bottles. Plastic shopping bags are made from a plastic called polythene. People throw away a lot of polythene waste. That's bad because scientists think it could take hundreds of years for polythene to decompose. Nylon. Nylon is a soft plastic. It was invented in 1935. We can put nylon into molds to make sneakers. We make fibers out of nylon too. People weave them with cotton or wool to make different types of clothes. Nylon fibers are very strong, so we use nylon to make parachutes. Acrylic. People use a type of plastic called acrylic to make paints. When acrylic paints are wet, you can mix them with water. When they're dry, they become waterproof. We use acrylic for lots of other things, like the windows and planes, and the fur on teddy bears. Chapter six. New materials. People are making new materials all the time. We use them to make bigger planes, warmer clothes, thinner televisions, and products that are better for our world. Silicon. Microchips are electrical parts that control computers. People make them from silicon, a material that we get from silica in sand. To make microchips, machines use chemicals to put tiny electrical parts onto pieces of silicon. When computers work, electricity goes through these parts. Before microchips, electrical parts were very big. The first computers were as big as a room. Modern computers are very small. Because we can put millions of electrical parts onto one microchip. Microchips are used in cars, televisions, washing machines, and many other things that we use every day. Fiber optic cables. Fiber optic cables are long plastic tubes with transparent fibers inside. The fibers are made of glass or plastic, and light can travel through them. We use fiber optic cables to send signals like television pictures and phone calls around the world. Doctors use fiber optic cables with cameras to look inside people's bodies. Liquid crystals. Liquid crystals are like liquids. But electricity makes the minerals inside them move. This makes the liquid crystals change color. People use liquid crystals to make pictures on LCD televisions and computer screens. Discover. Liquid crystal glass is transparent when electricity goes through the glass. When you turn off the electricity. You can't see through it. Composite materials. Materials have different properties, like being strong or transparent. Composite materials are made by weaving, using molds, or fixing two materials together. They have the best properties of both materials. 
composite materials are very light and very strong, so we use them to make things like fishing rods, tennis rackets, and planes. Some composite materials are made of plastic, glass, or metal fibers. You can weave them into special clothes. Some of these clothes are stronger than steel. They protect police officers from people with weapons, and they protect firefighters from fires. Aerogels. Aerogels are made from chemicals like silica and carbon. Silica aerogel is the lightest material in the world. It's difficult to see because it's 99.8% air. Hot and cold don't go through aerogel, so people use it to insulate things like windows, machines, and special clothes for astronauts. Recycled materials. It's bad for our world to throw away too many things. This uses energy and materials. And produces waste. It's good to recycle as much waste as possible. Then, in factories, people can make new materials from these recycled materials. We use new materials made from recycled plastic inside cars, because these materials are light and strong. Chapter seven. Finding materials. It can be very difficult to find materials, and many of them come from under the ground or underwater. How do we find and collect these materials? Seeing under the ground. We find different minerals in different types of rock. People called geologists study different rocks to find minerals in them. They also study rivers and oceans to see what minerals are in the water. Other scientists use machines to measure how electricity and radio signals go through different rocks in the ground. They also use trucks that hit the ground, and then machines measure how the ground moves. This tells them about the rocks and minerals under the ground. Drilling. Machines called drills make holes in the ground and collect small pieces of rock. Geologists study this rock to look for minerals. People also use drills to take oil from the ground. They make holes called oil wells, and they use pumps to take liquid oil from the ground. People use oil platforms to get oil. From under the ocean, some platforms stand on big legs under the water. It's difficult to get the oil because the water is very deep and the weather can be bad too. Discover the Petronius oil platform between Mexico and the USA is 609 meters tall, and 435 meters of it is under the water. Mines. Coal is a black mineral that people burn for heat in homes or factories. People dig mines to get coal and other minerals like gold and diamonds. Open cast mines are big holes in the ground. Huge digging machines take the rock from the mines. Sometimes. People use dangerous chemicals called explosives to break the rocks. Underground mines have tunnels deep under the ground. Miners work in the tunnels and cut the rock. It's very dangerous work because rocks can fall, and water or gas can get into the tunnels. Discover. The world's deepest mines are in South Africa. Miners work more than 3.5 kilometers underground. Water and soil. Salt 
is a mineral that we use for cooking and lots of other things. People can get salt by putting seawater into pools. When it's sunny, the water evaporates, but the salt stays in the pool. Later, people collect the salt. In some places, there are gems or minerals in the soil. People use water to get them out of the soil. To find gold, people put soil into a round object called a pan. When they wash the pan with water, the grains of gold go to the bottom of the pan. Chapter 8 In the Future We are inventing new materials and new ways to use old materials all the time. What type of materials will we use in the future? What products will we make from them? What do you think? Nanomaterials All chemicals are made of tiny things called atoms. Now, scientists are making materials from tiny tubes, fibers, or balls of atoms. They are called nanomaterials. People will use nanomaterials to make computer parts and tiny machines called nanobots. Nanobots will be smaller than grains of sand, but computers will control them. We will use them to build things and clean our cities. Maybe doctors will put nanobots inside sick people to repair their body. Electronic Fabric Electronic fabric feels like normal fabric, but it has electrical parts and threads. Today, some clothes have MP3 players in them. In the future, clothes will have phones or computers in them. They'll have screens on the arms for using the Internet. Some types of electronic fabric will have fiber optic threads or liquid crystals that can change color. Imagine you're wearing a nice jacket, but it isn't the right color for your shoes. No problem. You'll push the buttons on your jacket and change the color. Today, all football teams wear adverts on their shirts. In the future, the adverts will probably change during the match. Living Objects it's bad for our world to make too many materials like petrochemicals and metals because this produces waste and dangerous chemicals. In the future, we will grow more objects from living things like trees. Today, people grow objects like garden furniture from living trees. In the future, people will grow modern and comfortable homes from living things. Changing Our World The first people used materials like grass, rocks, and fur. Then, people learned how to make products from new materials like metals and glass. Later, people invented computers. In the future, the properties of materials will be different, and they will help people to make amazing new products. Maybe furniture will change color, and maybe our carpets and windows will produce electricity. When we tear our jeans, maybe nanobots in the fabric will repair the hole. Maybe televisions will be as thin as paper. The first people hunted animals and lived in caves. Then adobe bricks and metal tools changed the world. They helped people to build farms and to live together in cities. The materials and products of the future will change our world again.